to Anime Club's Hannibal Aslan Talk. Thank you for coming. This is our second Aslan event, though it's formatted differently from the first one. Uh, for those of you who attended our Doctor Who event, you'll know that that event was more of a trivia night with prizes. Tonight, however, I'll be presenting on Hannibal and explaining the importance of the show's portrayal of neurodivergent and mentally ill characters. There will be some trivia at the end, and you can help yourself to our delicious snacks in the back. We Yay! have a cheese plate, grape juice, and jelly donuts, because they sort of look like organs and have red stuff in them. <laughs> <laughs> bleeding heart, bleeding donut, what's the name? Yeah, exactly. Okay. First, you should all know what Hannibal is. I'm going to play a video that summarizes all of season one, and then try to break it down into more cohesive sections that specifically address the details in the show that are relevant to my topic. Now it does it. Ha, ha. That's funny. Uh, okay. Okay, the sh um, Okay, the short explanation of, is that Hannibal is about Hannibal Lecter before people are aware that he is a serial killing cannibal and is still a practicing psychiatrist. The main character, however, is Will Graham, an FBI, FBI consultant and teacher at the FBI Academy in Mississippi. Will Graham, in the book Red Dragon, written by Thomas Harris, is the one who captures Hannibal and is responsible for putting him in prison. The events of, of Red Dragon will take place in season four of NBC Hannibal. Seasons one, two, and three are entirely fresh material, and pl material and implied by the text in the Hannibal book series. Season 1 was the destruction of Will's positive relationship with Hannibal and explaining what the nervous breakdown that happened as a result of the Hobbs case was. Season 2 is building Will Graham back up, up from the ground and restructuring his relationships with those around him. Many, if not most, of these relationships will never be the same again, especially his relationship with Hannibal. Lecter. Which was genuinely kind of like this. The answer is yes. Yes, yes he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay. <coughs> now back to the dark stuff. Yeah. <laughs> However, what stands out most in season one is that the breaking down of Will Graham is entirely reliant on the fact that Will is neurodivergent and is highly misunderstood by most people he interacts with. Hannibal Lecter could not have framed Will as expertly as he did while also discrediting anything that Will says to the contrary had it not been for the fact that Will is not neurotypical of everyone around him was, except for some of the serial killers Will profiled. Divergent. There, there are more than there is more than one way to tell. One way is that neurodivergent viewers, uh, like me, uh, hyper identify with Will Graham. What does neurodivergent mean? It means that the brain processes information and sensory input in ways that it doesn't ordinarily in most other people. Most people are neurotypical hence the word, and they are able to interact with and function with others in a way that makes sense to the general public. Neurodivergent individuals, however, have difficulty navigating a world made for neurotypical people. Their behavior can seem strange or bizarre or make you wonder if something's wrong. The other way to tell that Will Graham is neurodivergent is that he comes right out and says he is. His exact phrase is that he is closer to auti autistics than narcissistic personality disorder. Some members of the Hannibal audience don't believe this means that he's autistic, and there are other conditions that do fall into being neurodivergent that are not forms of autism. The argument, unfortunately, is mostly used to say that he is neurotypical, which, no. It's not what that sentence means. No, that's not. 
Uh, however, the show doesn't really go right out and tell us what he has, and ultimately, ultimately that doesn't really matter. Because of how well NBC Hannibal shows that he's different, and thinks differently. There are some television shows with neurodivergent characters, the many Sherlock Holmes adaptations, Big Bang Theory, but the writers often seem incapable of telling the difference between an autistic character and a really intelligent asshole. <laughs> well, Graham, on the other hand, earnestly is portrayed as neurodivergent from the beginning to the end, and the, this portrayal never wavers. Communication is difficult for Will. Sometimes he phrases things in ways that sound incredibly morbid and potentially, potentially threatening to those around him when he honestly doesn't mean anyone harm and doesn't realize his true meaning has been lost. The phrase, you shouldn't threaten someone who thinks about killing people for a living springs to mind. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> it sounds Good very advice. threatening. It sounds very threatening. <laughs> this morbid way of interpreting the world is what makes him a great asset to Jack Crawford in the FBI. He can't be overly shaken by disturbing thoughts and concepts and is able to sift right through it to get to deducing the motivations of the serial killers he profiles and can accurately determine why a killer has done something and can extrapolate to where they would be and why in order for the FBI to capture and find them. It's not so much the events, but the thoughts that went into committing the murder that caused Will stress and grief due to an overlay between these emotional triggers and the empathy with the victims. <coughs> the show describes this as Will being pure empathy and refers to his condition as an empathy disorder, though there's some arg arguments within the fandom on whether or not that's an actual thing. This phrasing is used by uh, Jack Crawford, who is neurotypical, and Hannibal Lecter, who probably isn't neurotypical, but might not also be human, so it's definitely evil. <laughs> um, so that phrase might not be entirely accurate, but Will does feel great amounts of empathy for many characters who would not ordinarily receive empathy or even sympathy from others. It makes it easier for him to understand and connect with those who have undergone significant abuse, either from others or their mental conditions, in addition to the types of people who become serial killers. Many of these abuse victims are also rather unlikable people who don't do good or nice things. Abigail Hobbs comes to mind. A. Jack finds Will most useful when it comes to hunting psychopaths, but Will is conscious of the fact that not all quote-unquote psychopaths are actually psychopaths. Okay. Some of the killers Will profiles do fall into the psychopath category, but others, like Gary Jacob Hobbs and George Madsen, are not. Will is always the first one to make this distinction between them and other killers and often struggles to convince those he works with of who they are and why thinking of them in a stereotyped way is unhelpful. In fact, it is because of their emotional connections to others that make them so significant, especially Garrett Jacob Hobbs, because his murders and subsequent death are the first uh, uh, Domino tipped over in the story. In fact, there are only two individuals with antisocial personality disorder who are key to the plot, and they are Abel Gideon and Hannibal Lecter himself, and Dr. Lecter might not actually have antisocial personality disorder, but is the devil himself. <laughs> I forget who Abel Gideon is. Yeah, Jack's not very nice. Okay, that was fun to make. That beard. <laughs> that young. <laughs> a contributing factor to Will's portrayal of being so genuinely neurodivergent is how, in how Will processes information is because they cast Hugh Dancy in the role. That beard. Hugh Dancy has played characters with 
Asperger's syndrome in the past, a condition that has now been re-identified as actually being a form of autism instead of being a related condition. His role in the 2009 film Adam was his first introduction to Asperger's and he did a lot of research for, on the condition for the role. Brian Fuller has also gone on record as saying that Will is very neurotic and that it was something from the book series that he wanted to make sure which was retained in the TV series, something the film adaptation of Red Dragon with Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter doesn't care to do. Though Anthony Hopkins is wonderful, the Will Graham not so much. So Nancy... You don't even get a name. I don't remember it, Josh. So, so Dancy seems to be specifically chosen by Brian Fuller because of Dancy's experience with neurodivergent characters. Hugh Dancy was the very first person to be cast for the TV show, and he was the entire reason that Mads Mikkelsen agreed to accept the role as Hannibal Lecter, because they were in a movie together about King Arthur in 2004. Ooh. They were minor characters, but they became best friends. Ooh. Everything's wonderful and happy. <laughs> and rainbows. <laughs> And blood. Lots of blood. Yes. Okay. Inversely, Maz Mikkelsen, who plays Hannibal Lecter, has been very clear in many interviews that Hannibal Lecter is not a psychopath. Okay. Well. Brian Fuller has not said anything that contradicts this. So, Hannibal Lecter, for all of his purposes, is evil. <laughs> Father 
could have a way, a way to find out where the girls lived, amongst other things, in order to find them, abduct them, and kill them. Kinky. What? Think about it. No! no. <laughs> Serena! Not You're okay. welcome. And he's pretty innocent, too. What? <laughs> On top of that, there is the horrific realization that Garrett Jacob Hobbs was feeding the meat from these girls to her and her mother the entire time after her father is killed by Will Graham in episode one. Soup song, sweetie! Abigail Hobbs is going through some tough shit <laughs> and makes the mistake of trusting Hannibal Lecter out of all of her new companions. Well, <laughs> you had one job, honey. He's unlucky. Men. NBC Hannibal so far has two young women killers who have a great potential for being sympathetic to viewers. Many people do hate Abigail Hobbs, though I personally see her as a very strong, very intelligent, very hurt character and adore her characterization. Casey Roll is amazing! The other one is Georgia Madchen. Georgia Madchen has had C Cotard Syndrome since she was nine years old. Cotard syndrome is known as walking dead syndrome, or walking corpse syndrome. This is a mental condition where the person believes themselves to already be dead. She also had many, many physical conditions as a result of piss poor treatment in the mental hospital she was placed in at an early age, and an inability to look after herself after she escaped. Her skin would literally slide off if she touched something or if someone touched her. It, it left her DNA all over her murder victim. Due to the many conditions she was suffering from, for she was suffering, not dealing, uh, she was actually unable to recognize faces as she could before. To her, one's face looked like a terrifying mask. What was in reality a gruesome murder was, in Georgia's mind, self-defense. Will Graham is the only person in the entire FBI who was able to feel something for her other than, oh, psychopathic killer again, let's put her in prison or put her out of her misery sooner rather than later. Will was able to reach out to her and make her feel safe. Okay, the rest of the video doesn't really matter. <laughs> Unless you watch the whole series. <laughs> okay. Yes? It, at the opening of that video, um, was there any prior explanation as to why she was under his bed? Did he know before his dog started going? In the very going? beginning of the video, um, it shows how she kills uh, someone who used to be her friend. She was hiding under her bed, then grabbed her ankle and drug her under. Um, from George's point of view, she was hiding under the bed from a monster. But from her friend's point of view, she was trying to figure out who the intruder was, and it, the, foot, foot, the wet footsteps led back into her bedroom after she went to investigate dripping from the attic. So it's kind of like a small child hiding under her, her, her bed to avoid monsters and bad people. But when she was under Will's bed, did he know that she was there before his dog started freaking out? Uh, no, he did not. He woke up and noticed that the dogs were uh, concerned about something, and because he had analyzed the crime scene from the beginning of the episode, he re and had interactions with her throughout the episode up until this point, he assumed that she was the one under the bed. He reacted far more calmly than I He's uh, been getting inside of her head throughout the episode, and thus felt like he understood her, which ultimately he did. Right. Um, okay. Makes me glad I have boxes under my bed so nothing can fit under there. <laughs> <laughs> so he's yeah. a serial killer magnet. Yeah, it, it comes with his job too. But um, okay. It was entirely because of Will that Georgia was able to get the medical treatment and proper diagnosis that she needed. Hannibal's later murder of Georgia is something that will make me very angry for a long time because it is just not fair. She was a sweet girl, damn it. <laughs> um, Georgia's death and Abigail's death are two of the murders that Hannibal frames Will for. The last most significant character
character who falls into either a neurodivergent category or mentally ill category is Abel Gideon. Oh, Abel Gideon. The show is very clear that he is considered a psychopath by pretty much everyone. He shows no, no remorse, no empathy. He is rather gross when making sexual advances towards Alana Bloom, but despite having murdered his wife and daughter and a mental hospital nurse, he is still a victim like Georgette, Abigail, and Will. His psychologist, who isn't even a psychologist in the book series, the TV show upranked him, is Frederick Chilton, and he is a manipulative, scummy jackass. <laughs> Tell us how you really do. <laughs> beautiful. He wanted his hospital to become famous, so he manipulated Abel Gideon into thinking that he was the Chesapeake Ripper. The Chesapeake Ripper is what Hannibal Lecter is known for, known as before they are able to attach an actual name to his murders. Sheldon then sets up a scenario where Gideon can reveal that he is the Ripper. That is how Gideon kills the mental hospital nurse. He's left alone for a procedure with the nurse and he kills her because there's no one to stop him. It's old Chilton's fault. That was not <laughs> the FBI then comes in to either prove or disprove Gideon's claim that he is the Chesapeake Ripper. Gideon claiming to be the Ripper makes Hannibal rather angry, as you can imagine, because that's addictive me fast. <laughs> At least five people die as a result of the charade. Well, while Gideon and Hannibal are the ones to kill them, Chilton is mostly responsible. Though Jack Crawford, journalist Freddie Lowndes, and even the darling Alana Bloom are responsible as well. Only Will is the one to voice that it is a bad idea to announce Gideon's claims to the general public in a bid to flush the Ripper out. Jack's intention is to use this as an opportunity to catch the Ripper. They do not. Five people die as a result of Jack Crawford's orders. Gideon eventually has to has to come to terms that he is not the Chesapeake Ripper. This results in an identity crisis that results in four more murders, Chilton getting his bowels removed and arranged in his arms as though Chilton's body was a fruit basket, what? and okay. an attempt on a lot of Bloom's life. What? Yes. So does this mean that Jack was responsible for the Ripper murders? Yes. Jack, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> oh! Hey! 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 Okay. Jack, see your mustache beard. The following video <laughs> is the most gruesome video in the entire PowerPoint. So if, if y'all yeah. want to look away, yeah. do so now. Don't look away. Let's just look sit back there. Yeah, okay. Seems an awful place. Gideon does learn that Hannibal Lecter is the Chesapeake Ripper through this and learns that Will Graham really isn't feeling well because of the encephalitis that he contracted, probably from the cannibalism that he didn't realize was cannibalism because Hannibal lied about what the meat was. Yay! Yeah. People just aren't so cool with cannibalism. I don't know why. It's called mad cow syndrome. Sweetie, I'm Gideon is not the first one. Gideon is the first one who is not cannibal and not dead by the end of the season that knows that Will Graham has something medically wrong with him that is affecting his vision and hearing, making him hallucinate and have seizures when he is not schizophrenic and does not ordinarily have seizures. And Hannibal is willingly... Because Hannibal's a dick. Hannibal's an asshole. <laughs> he, just, just, he did it on purpose. <laughs> You knew the meat was infected? Yeah. Gideon I mean, get, does get shot by Will before the season ends, but he has survived this gunshot wound and will be in season two. I'm incredibly excited for further interaction between Gideon and Will, considering what Gideon now knows and that regardless of any antisocial personality disorder diagnoses, Abel Gideon cared more about Will's physical health than Hannibal Lecter did, and now he has something in common with Will. Shitty, manipulative, abusive psychiatrist. Yay! Yay! <laughs> the theme of NBC <laughs> The theme of NBC Hannibal is definitely that the neurodivergent and mentally ill and the psychologically abused and traumatized know far more about what's going on right in their backyard than any of the neurotypical characters. 
And that is going to hurt everyone, because no one believes the neurodivergent characters. Because neurotypical people can sometimes be assholes. Especially Jack <laughs> Crawford. Show. Well, that too. And his Alana mustache Bloom's right. beard. Alana Bloom is gorgeous. But yeah. Jack Crawford is an asshole. <laughs> the disregarding of these characters who don't think like you do is going to lead to death and pain and the realization that you have been eating human meat every single time you had dinner at Adam Lester's house. It's like, yay! Unless you're, unless you're Freddy. Unless you're Freddy Lounge, who's a effing vegetarian! <laughs> <laughs> Which is a smart idea. I should, I should think about this. Unless you watch the episode about the guy who used mushrooms. Um, yeah. What type of, are we talking mushrooms or? Mushrooms <laughs> growing on coma patients. What? Yeah. Coma patients were made into a garden for mushrooms. Why? So are we talking mushrooms or mushrooms? We're Regular mushrooms. mushrooms. Don't can grow on anything. Okay. Oh. Like season, okay. Stuff. Yes. season one ends with Will Graham framed for murder and in prison. Hannibal Lecter won this round. But in season two, there will be a reckoning, and Will Graham will put Hannibal Lecter away. Abigail and Georgia are dead, and who even really knows about Gideon? But Will knows he's not imagining things. He knows he's not out of touch with reality. He sees Hannibal for what he is, and he will do whatever it takes to protect others from Hannibal. In interviews, it has been said that clearing his name comes second to keeping Hannibal from hurting anyone else. And I'm particularly excited to see how he's going to do that. The season premiere is tomorrow at 10 p.m. And if you want to watch it with me, you're invited to come over to my house. <laughs> Just don't wear a red shirt, because then Hannibal will get you. <laughs> what? That's a, that's a rule no matter what show you're in. <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. Start, here's the start, season two trailer. Start, 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 and that, 